I want to, I need to do, um, a, that's the center for the vestment is a, a raised IHS. And I want to go over what raised embroidery is and can it be done on an embroidery machine? And yes, it can be done. But you have to understand also that there are many different types of raised embroidery. And so we're going to look at some of them and I'll show you how to do different ones. Um, so for example, and, and they raised embroidery is used a lot on vestments. Here's a cope piece with an IHS on it. And all of this scroll work, the IHS itself, this is all raised embroidery and to have this. And I have a lot of vestments that have this, but it needs to be fixed. Or what happens most, most of the time is the fabric underneath it on some of the oldest vestments is rotted. These, because they're done with metallic threads, uh, the raised embroidery is fine. But how do you take this off and put it onto another vestment? And that's something we'll deal with um, later. But there are many different types of raised embroidery. And so we'll start with some of the easier ones and get into the more involved. So this is also uh, from a, a black vel um, velvet raised embroidery vestment. This is the black, the background is velvet. And all of this work on here is raised. And my mouse keeps wanting to move go somewhere else. Um, this is a really old cope. It's in a museum. And you can see the raised embroidery on here, not only these motifs on the outside. And of course, this was all done by hand. Come on. Um, this was all done by hand. And uh, there's a lot of scroll work in here, um, which is couched threads again to give it a raised effect. No, don't rename it. All right, this is rather modern um, raised raised work. Uh, you can buy this from some place uh, in over in India and in is some of the Asian countries, they're still like doing a lot of this raised embroidery so that if you, when you find it, it usually comes from there. And this is again, a, a modern um, religious uh, vestment house is selling these that you can buy them to put on vestments. This is another one. Again, all of this is, these are lines of either French bullion or, the, and though this is probably Czech style, oh, it's, it's a rougher style. French bullion is, this is more than the French bullion is, is, is smoother and more um, uniform where this is rougher. The Czech, what they call Czech bullion is a little bit rougher. And again, all of this is put down. This, the, the needle is threaded through this to is tubular. And it's threaded through here and it's stitched only on both sides. There is no stitch, stitching through the middle here. Um, now there can be resin embroidery where they do that, but I'll, uh, that's a different thing and I'd have to show you that. But again, they the threads are gone, are put in a, the direction that they want it to go and the, it's only stitched on the sides and it's stitched over a padding, which makes it raised. And we'll go get into that in a few minutes. So, um, and then they put um, a backing on it to keep it from coming apart. And so th there's a number of these types. Again, this is the, sh the smoother kind is, is probably French, what they call French bouillon and, uh, or pearl bouillon. And uh, some of the rougher ones are... It's, it's, it's just the way they wind the thread that gives it a different feel to it. Um, so my first attempt at doing raised embroidery was this vestment set. And all the, the leaves on here, 
and the grapes, <sighs> this mouse thing, the leaves on here and the grapes are um, three dimensional. They're up, they're above the fabric behind it. They were done separately. They were done with foam, and then they were sewn down onto the vestment. Uh, there were a few places like the weed in here where I actually put the foam on the vestment and then sewed across it. Uh, again, this is the the back of that same vestment. This is another, this was my second attempt at raised embroidery. And again, the foam was put directly on the vestment and the satin stitches were, and I only use satin stitches, were put across it in this areas where there's the raised gold work. It's hard to see on this because of the background. But that is, it is raised above the fabric because of that. Here you can see it a little bit better. The, the loops on the side are raised as well as the, the these flower petals that come out of these things. Those are all raised. And again, it's done with, it was done with craft foam on top of the fabric. Uh, this one was more along the lines of a tampunto. This, the hearts in the, the, this is raised, but again, this is just trim that was put down to give it a raised effect. But the embroidery in the center to make it look raised, I actually, let me get a closer one. Um, it was stuffed uh, like tampunto from behind. So these hearts were a little higher than these parts, and these parts were sewn um, uh, with, again, I think with craft foam. This was a vestment that I made. The, the gentleman gave me the, um, not this part. Uh, this, this was all done by me. Uh, but you can, you can see the raised, the raised parts are these things at the end that hold the, the, the trim on the sides, as well as these um, flower things around the edge. This was what he gave me was this section of this vestment from here up over and down. He just, he just had a part of the vestment and I had to replace the end pieces here, the end here and make the whole front. This part is again is raised, but this was already there, um, which I'm glad I didn't have to do because at that point, I don't know that I could have done this. Uh, but I was able to reproduce these sections, the sections on here, um, again, using the craft foam idea. So here's, here's where I'm putting it down. You can see it a little bit better here, the raised, these raised sections here and these raised sections here. Uh, you can see the raised center. But again, you can see where the old part of the vestment ended there and here, and the new part began. So this is the sections that I had to replace. So how does it work? With Tampunto, you have a stabilizer, usually linen in, if you're, hand, if you're doing hand Tampunto, it's usually linen or cotton or some kind of backing fabric. And above that, you put some kind of batting. Now you can also use foam or cord. Um, again, you're raising, you want something to raise what you're putting on top of it. Then the fabric goes over top of that and then your embroidery. When, you're embroid when you embroider through this, it's pushing down all through all these layers and it's, wherever it is usually done with a line embroidery so that when you're done, um, the batting will push up and give it a raised effect in it. And this is off, this is most often done with quilts, with quilting. Um, basically that's a, a lot of quilting is done that way with Tampunto. Um, so, and um, but it's, it has this stuffing behind it. That's what raises it up, the stuffing. Now, 
with regular hand embroidery. And that's the kind, for example, the kind of with the um, Let me go back quickly to, all right, so. Let me go back to some of the old ones. Again, these, with these types, this is hand embroidery. And what they're using, there has to be, they have a background, a stable, something to stabilize it. And on top of that, they put, they put a piece of fabric, something that they can sew into. And then on top of that, they have a, they have like a, it's all, it's like cardboard. And if you feel this, it's like cardboard. And then they wrap over top of that. Sometimes they wrap all the way around so that they don't have to do the sewing on both sides. But if it's it, it with, a, with um, the ones that do have fabric, they will stitch on one side and then stitch on the other side and go back and forth. It saves a lot of the gold. And of course, that's what they want to do. Uh, even if it's not real gold, it's just a, a lot of the gold work now is just aluminum, gold colored aluminum or something similar. So um, it, it's so it's but they have a form under here. And it's usually a cardboard. You can feel it as cardboard. And then uh, when they're all finished on the back, they, they apply a glue and another piece of paper to cover all of those stitches and places where that it where they're they have and and holds everything together um if you're doing real hand if you're doing real hand embroidery like this one uh again you're using some sort of padding underneath this and these are often little small pieces of of coiled metallic threads put down in here in small, small pieces all over the place, but it's all padded. And then some of your other ones are couched. The, 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 it's a thicker wire and it's laid on there and they have couching threads going over it to hold it in place along here, in here, all of this, the arches in here. Um, they use couching for a lot of that. So no. So, um, so going back to, whoops, going back to hand embroidery, you have a stabilizer, then you have a fabric, your main fabric, then you have something to raise it up, either the foam, I use craft foam, uh, or cord, or a batting, or in the case of some of those, they use a, some kind of cardboard filler in there to lift it up. And then the embroidery is put on top. And again, the embroidery is only t attached at the sides because if you attach it in the middle, it pushes down this batting and this cord or this form and it flattens it out and you lose the, the whole effect. Um, now there's another type called stump work that's even more elaborate and much more raised it's all, it's all, it almost gives three dimensional and again here you would have a stabilizer because you need something to hold all your layers together then you have a your main fabric your backing fabric and on top of that you would you would be putting other things you would be putting the embroidery itself it could be ribbon embroidery it could be um, just plain stitches of flat embroidery. And then on top of that, you put you can put something that's more three-dimensional and sometimes often uses a wire frame or that cardboard or other some kind of other padding, but it makes it very high. And over that, they put another layer of embroidery. So they have a flat layer of embroidery and then they have this this raised section that is embroidered and that wire for wire is still in there and they will push that through this in to the behind the to, behind this fabric here and there they will secure it with either threads or with glue or something and uh so you have 
a more three-dimensional look to it. Um, so you can, and you can find a lot of this. See if you go on YouTube, they give you directions on how to do stump work. Digitizer hat, which was Hatch, they had at one time. Uh, I notice it's no longer part of the program. Their 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 program software, but the digitizer that I have uh, has a thing for stump work. Um, all but but all it really is doing is putting down the uh, marking the place where the wire frame goes, and then doing the the zigzag stitches over that and then maybe satin stitches or your embroidery on top of that and then separating those elements to be later applied to this embroidery which you also end up doing within the program so that's also something i'm going to look at but that's more advanced so we'll look at that much later digitizer also has a thing called 3d satin I don't know if any of the other programs have this or not, but the way it works in my digitizer, I'm not, I haven't, don't even know if Hatch still kept this. This is good. It's not, it's not great. You don't get a whole lot of lift, but it is, and it uses a whole lot of stitches and thread because it, it does everything three times. You have your stabilizer and you have your main fabric. Then it stitches your this your embroidery is going to be this this wide when it's done, and it knows that. You digitize the outline of whatever it is you're going to do, and then you click 3D satin. And it automatically does splits it into three layers. The first layer is smaller than the second and the third. So it'll do satin stitches. These are all satin stitches over this. So you're going to get a certain height to this. Then it comes out a little bit and does another layer of satin stitches over that. So since these are satin, this is going to be raised the height of these satin stitches in the center. And it will go past them. So it's a little bit, it's not so high at the ends. The third layer is actually three one, two, three layers. By the time you're done, three layers of satin stitches high. So if your satin stitches aren't an eighth of, a, of an inch, they might be a couple of millimeters high. But by the time you're done, let's say this is two millimeters, you're six millimeters high by the time you finish this. So you do get some lift to it. But think of all, how many times you know, all the stitches that are involved in doing all of these different layers. Um, satin stitch itself is a lot of threads. And now you're multiplying it by three plus because each one is further than the last. Um, I'll show you this in digitizer. Uh, it's a really hard to see because it just shows as three, you know, it just says it's 3D statin, but you can't see the 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 effect of it unless I sew it out, which I will probably show try and show you. So know, knowing how things are constructed is the first thing you need to do if you want to copy it. So that's why I made these diagrams and why I showed you these pictures to give you an idea of the different types of raised embroidery there are. So this is the what I need to do. This IHS that goes in the middle of this Sartouche a um, uh, vestment. And this is raised. You can tell by looking at it, it is raised. Not very high, but it is raised. Um, it looks to me, if if I don't I don't have the vestment in front of me, so I can't really tell this. This looks like a padding that is covered with small pieces of metal which they embroider down. This is not an unusual technique in in uh, raised embroidery, but they cover everything. They cover the whole padding with that. Now, how would I copy this? That's the next thing. How would I do this? Uh, I would probably do it with the craft foam. But the craft foam works fine if you're doing satin stitches from one side to the other. Remember, the foam is what's holding it up. 
And if you try to get a texture like this on top of the foam, you're pushing the foam down. So you're defeating your purpose in even using the craft foam. So I need to do this embroidery because this is a textured embroidery. I need to do this textured embroidery on the fabric, the main fabric, and then put the, the foam behind it after, after I already have that. But then I need to go around, but then I need to hold it all together and give it, make sure that it's raised. So I would have to put stabilizer behind that and stitches around the edge, outside edge to define it and push down um, the edges, uh, uh, around the edges to give it, to give it that lift. Well, since this already has red stitches around the outside, I think that's doable. So that's what I'm going to work on and is showing you how I'm going to work on this, this project here and try to make it three-dimensional and see how it turns out.